Well, it has been four months since we bought our property. I'm going to show you what we've been up to and what we've managed to achieve. If you've got any questions about our progress so far or about our plans or you've got any hints or tips or tricks, please stick them in the comments down below. I love reading your comments and you guys have been so helpful giving me different ideas and different ways of doing things. So please keep it up and yeah, stick them down below and I'm going to show you around where we're up to so far. The very first thing we did was we got the digger driver in. This is a contractor that used to live locally and we know him quite well. Uh, he did the dig out for this current house that we're in and he is a really good contractor he knows what he's doing and is good enough to use his initiative which has been really fantastic so we got him in he did some big drains for us we did one big drain along the side of the driveway we put a culvert in uh, to drain away from where we're going to be putting our cabins he put in a few little swales and other drains for us without being asked which was really helpful and of course he put in our massive driveway and our big turnaround and with his bulldozer he moved a whole lot of slash out the way so that we could get our garden started. We also got him to level out a platform where we were going to put the tunnel house and generally the boys just loved going and watching him work. Now while the contractor was there with the bulldozer and the digger we did have some trespassers come and help themselves to our property. So one of the very first things we installed was actually our farm gate and my darling mother made it for me to save me some time and I think she's done a beautiful job. Our aim with this property to start with is to get our food production up and running and then build the cabins and then we can move there and get started with the animal infrastructure and the fences and all that sort of stuff. But it's the very beginning of spring here so we're heading into our growing season and I really don't want to miss out on the opportunity of trying to grow some stuff over there. The ground is not fantastic, but it doesn't mean it won't grow stuff. So we bought a big tunnel house, which has been a bit of a dream of mine for quite some time. So this covers 100 square meters, which is about 1,000 square feet. So it's a nice big one, which I'm very excited about. And my tomatoes that I've got at home are begging to be planted so the last thing to do in here is to cover, put in a little bit more compost and then we'll be able to get these tomatoes in but we'll stick with the timeline we put this tunnel house up and then we were hit by some phenomenal winds and we realized that it is just not strong enough as it was so we had to add a whole lot of additions to it which I'm going to do a little video on because I think if you're buying a kit, it's quite helpful to know what extra things you can do to help make it storm proof. So for us, we had to add wood behind the aluminium C channels along the bottom because when we turned up after the howling wind, there were, the sides were just flapping in the wind. We almost lost the entire cover. So we've actually covered the ends in thick plywood and made it a lot more rigid. Uh, we have reinforced the sea channels along the bottom also with timber and we've added some rope up over the top in a similar way to what you would do a caterpillar tunnel. So this all together combined has really anchored it down to the ground. So once the tunnel was actually up, we then marked out where our vegetable garden was going as well and then we brought over massive amounts of manure and bedding from our animal sheds at our current place, sprinkled them all over the place and tilled them in. Ideally long term we're going to be no-till on these garden beds. I think from experience that no-till really is the way to go. There's a lot less weeds and the plants do a lot better. But to start with we are definitely tilling it just to give it this uh, loosening up and a bit of a kick start because the soil is in such bad nick and so we added all the amendments that were recommended to us from our soil tests which meant that we've put in lashings of rock phosphate and calcium and or lime whatever uh, lots of copper and boron and all the little micronutrients as well there's a big recipe that we've got that um, then we just spread it through so that combined with the bedding and the manure and then we've tilled it through and loosened it up and then I was able to flick the dirt out of the pathways and up into the beds and we were able to shape ourselves some beds. It all felt like wonderful progress. And then I ordered 10 cubic meters of 
compost, which is more than 10 cubic yards. I'll put a conversion up here because I'm not sure exactly how they convert together. Uh, but it's a huge pile of poop. Um, and it is quite old. And so there's no risk of it being contaminated. I think the guy said it was from 2005. So it's very well broken down. It's very humusy. Um, and it's very exciting to see it sitting in the driveway. So the next plan is to put that on my tomato beds. I have started adding it to the vegetable garden. We've got potatoes in and peas in and some ochre in and the garlic and onions are in. I do have a lot more compost to be moving though. Next on the list was setting up some sort of water collection system off the top of the tunnel house. There's no way I am wasting that sized roof and not collecting the water off it. So we've got it set up so it's coming into this one IBC tote at the moment and we have just this morning moved two more IBC totes over there that I need to get the pipe work so we can hook them all up. Eventually I will have this on an automatic timer to water both my garden and my tunnel house but at the moment we will just be using that same off-grid pump set up with my 12 volt battery that you can see up here but we'll just stick a hose into the fresh water so that means I can run it through my drip irrigation which will be really helpful. So next on my list is going to be mulching the food forest, getting this compost all over my gardens as best as possible and getting things planted and of course when Matthew, my husband, is around we're going to be working on the cabins as well which they're just going to be a shed basically. We're going to be camping in a, a shed until we get the house sorted. Plus of course we need to get some windbreaks in and at the moment the seeds that I've grown for my windbreaks the trees are about this high so they need some time to grow. We have so many ideas and things that we think we'll do and if we could get ourselves a digger or a tractor or some kind of heavy piece of machinery, I have so many swales planned, lots of ways of capturing water to stop it running off the hill and stealing all my topsoil, places to plant trees for windbreaks and we're going to do rotational grazing for sheep and cattle as well as obviously some chickens because no homestead is complete with no chickens. And we actually have a new member of the family arriving later in the month he's cute and little and he will be for one of my daughter's birthday presents so keep your eyes peeled for updates on that as well and I have recently got my food forest started so if you want to check out how I got it started you can see it in this video here thanks for joining me on this tour of where we're at at the moment it's a very exciting journey and I can't wait to see where the next few months take us I will see you in the next video